Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. This video is based on a question that I got on a YouTube video. I had somebody ask about a float. I've put out a few videos on float, but I've never used uh, a real example of how. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this BME 280 temperature sensor and I'm going to display the, the values on a float value on the next one. I'm going to go over the Arduino code first because that's just going to collect the data and just send it out to get started and so then we'll move on to the next one after. There's really not a lot to the Arduino portion of this. I'm going to use the libraries that come from Adafruit for this um, just to speed up this portion. If you want to learn the BMA or the BME 280, you can figure it out. It's not it's not too difficult because there's also a humidity portion to it and a barometric pressure portion to it. But since I can't get that to change easily, uh, but I can the temperature just by putting my fingers on it, uh, we're, we're going to use that for this example. I start by setting up my end character. It just makes the string easier that I'm sending up to the Arduino. The wire library is for the I squared C, the uh, Adafruit itself, and then I set up an instance of the uh, BME280. I'm going to use the same serial port to show for the serial monitor and for the data that I'm sending up to the Nexion. I'm not looking for any data back from the Nexion, so this should work okay. And what I like to do is I like to test to make sure that it's actually working. So you can see if, if I can't begin it, if not begin, then I'm going to enter this while state so it'll get stuck in this area right here. And in the main loop is where I'll do most of the work here. At first I'm just having it print temperature equal and then the reading from the temperature. I'm going to upload this and show it to you on the serial monitor. And as you can see, I just have it printing out the temperature. It's in degrees Celsius, so I'm going to have this converted over to Fahrenheit, and then we'll send it up to the Nexion. So when I send it up to the Nexion, I have to send it to an object. And in this case, the object is x0. And then the value of it is going to be equal to that temperature I'm reading in. But I'm going to take that temperature and I'm going to multiply it times 1.8. And then I'm going to add 32 to it. And that will give me my Fahrenheit. And then I'm going to end it with this end character. I'm going to do that every two seconds. And now we'll head over to the next one and I'll show you it. We'll see it received in there. You have to be careful and make sure you turn off that serial monitor. Otherwise you'll have a conflict because I'm sending the data up to the next one and I'm going to use the same port I would have sent to the serial monitor. So in this uh, Nexion editor, I have my float up at top, and then I have two buttons. And this button, what it's going to do is it's going to increment that x value, and the down button is going to decrement it. And I'm going to show you that um, at the same time that I'm taking data, but I'm going to show you that adding 1 to it, you can see that I have 1 point and then a whole bunch of zeros. And you set this up, over in the settings down here. And you use this VVS0 and VVS1. If I change the 0 to 2 for that VVS0, it makes it to be two decimal places. If I leave it at 0, it will auto set and it will go to whatever it needs. Now for the uh, to the right of the decimal point, the 6, if I change it to 4, you'll see that it only shows 4. Now this tends to lock in, so if I send eight decimal places to it and I have four, it will only show four. If you put a zero on it, it doesn't seem to auto set it. So you need to give it its decimal places. In this case, I'm going to use six. So now I'm going to run this in debug. Now before I start the uh, serial port going, I'm just going to hit these buttons. And you can see that adding one adds one to that whole or to the whole thing. So essentially that decimal point is nothing more than a graphic placed within the number. So if I move this down, let's say I only was showing four, it would still show the three, it would just be in the fourth place right here instead of in the sixth place because it's just one big number. I'm going to start sending data to it. I'm going to connect up and you'll see down here data coming in. And you're going to see that sending a float isn't going to work.
You can see I'm sending, oh, I'm still sending temp. I must not have uploaded it to the Arduino. I'll go back and do that now. Okay, I have it uploaded. I'm gonna reset the connection or the simulator portion and hit start again. Okay, I'm gonna stop it because you can see that it's not updating and I'm getting an error. And that's because the Nexion doesn't really understand floats. So that 60.17, it doesn't understand that, so it can't populate the X0. You're sending it a value it doesn't get. So what we need to do is send it a value it does. And based upon the fact that if I go up and down here, I'm not actually adding a 1 to it, which you would expect to see over here, I'm just populating this field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the value times 1,000 or times 100 and make it be 6,017. And then that should update it and give us the value that we want. So all I've done is I've added or I've multiplied it by 100 now. Now, for those of you that are aware of how the string function works, you might see that there is going to be an error. But I want to show you how this goes first and then we'll repair the error here next. So I'm going to send this up and then go back to the next one. So now that I'm back here, I'll reset the simulator again. I'll start it. And now we have 6022.40. And that's because on the Arduino, when you string or you take a float and turn it into a string with a typecast, it defaults to two decimal places. So I'm going to stop this and go back. So on this line where we take that read temperature and turn it into a string, we have to do one more thing to it. We have to put it in parentheses. And we'll put a comma. And just to show you how it works, I'm going to put a comma 4. And then I'm going to upload it. Now I'll reset it again. And hit start. Ah, we got an error up here. Sometimes that happens when you first start. Let me stop it. And see, now we've got four decimal places. And since the next one doesn't get that decimal point, or it errors at that point, although it's more accurate now in our temperature reading, it doesn't really help us for what we're trying to accomplish today. So I'm going to change that 4 to 0, and then all we're going to get is this four-digit number right here. So we go back to this Arduino, replace the 4 with a 0. You could also cast this to an integer. And I might do that at the end here, but for right now, I want to show you how to do it with an actual float value. So now when I hit start, see we just get that 619 and it populates. So it's 60 degrees where I'm working right now. I'm going to warm it up a little bit. And you can see that it's going up 62, 63, but it's still not where we want it. We need to move the decimal place over one, two, three, four more spots. So all we have to do is replace our multiplier. So I'm going to stop this and go back. And we'll add four zeros. One, two, three, four. So now we're moving it over four more spots or multiplying it. Plus we should get a good accuracy because it's still at this point when we're multiplying it by that number by one million that just means we're going to get the accuracy of the float so you'll see I'm going to upload this now and now you can see that we're getting our temperature and it appears to be a float now now understand that this is the value I'm going to stop this this is the value that we're actually sending into it which is just a gigantic value but it's being presented as a float, and that is the real temperature. But if I increment and add 1, I'm not, it's not going to go to 62, it's going to go to 67, 68. If I go down, so you can see how it, we're kind of tricking it into thinking it's a float. And I think Nexion, they call it a, quote, a float, but and I guess it is represented as a float, but it's just a way of tricking it. 
Now I'm going to go back and, and change it to an int or send it a different way so we don't have to worry about that comma on the print. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove this, but we're going to leave this extra set of parentheses in here and we're going to put the term int in front of it. So we're going to take this value here and we have one two three on one side and one two three on the other side. so we've got and we're going to convert that after it's all done into an integer and then convert it to a string and then send it out now we'll see if this compiles because this is actually incorrect but I wanted to demonstrate it to show you how or why now what's interesting is it did compile I'm going to put this on the serial monitor right now. And it does appear to be working. I didn't think it would work. I thought I would have to set it as a type long in order to make it work. Let me go back to that again and change this to a long. And compile it. OK, I'm going to open the serial monitor again. and it still holds. I was under the impression that an integer wouldn't be large enough to hold that large of a number. I'm going to leave it as long right now and we'll go back to the next one and we'll see it'll populate. But, but you'll notice you don't have to worry about that comma and that value. Um, the long will just convert it to an integer and the string will interpret the whole thing. And you can see I'm going to go ahead and warm it up just to show you I'm working with a, an actual sensor. That's pretty cold out here. So I'm not going to be able to warm it up too much just by holding it. But it does work. And this shows you how to bring a float over to the next one. There is one more thing I'll show you how to move the decimal point and see how that it just doesn't work because you know when the value should be in the 60s. And if I go down to this, um, this down here, this VVS1 and change it to 4 now. And now we run it. Now it's reading 61,000. So it, it takes whatever you're sending it this value down here and just places that decimal point where you tell it to. Now if I set the decimal point at 2 on the VVS 0, you do get an interesting result, so I'll do that next. So you go out and we want two places on this and we have 4 down here. This will lock that value in, I believe. And you can see that setting that value on the left locks it in even though we only have four and we're sending a long digit to it. Because we're still sending that large number to it, but it's just ignoring. And if I change this on the right now to zero, it's still going to lock that in. So I set this to zero. Now it's going to act as if it's just an integer, but it's only going to take the two, the first two leftmost digits. So it's taking that 60. Let's see if I can warm it up to 61 degrees. So you can use that X float, and you could use it as an integer, and you could lock it in so you only show two the first two digits of some string you're sending or some value it can't be a string it have to be a value but let's just say you didn't know what the value was you were going to be sending but you only wanted to show the first two um, numbers that are on that this would be a way to trick it into doing that so in this video I just wanted to kind of go over that X float again and show it in combination with a real world with a real world device and in this case, I used that BMA280, and I just sent the value up to it. And I also went over that if you didn't use this, if you didn't convert it to a long and left it as a float, 
you'd have to go on this side of it and put a comma and then the number of decimal places that you wanted to send it to. So I hope this helps people better understand it. I'll use this video and, and refer back to it when I get questions on the YouTube visit on the YouTube videos. Well that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.